Hey, what's going on, dudes and dudettes? I am the Mystical Green Beanie, and with the Joker movie coming out soon, I wanted to make a video about the Joker because I, I like the Joker, and this gives me an excuse to talk about the Joker. So, this Joker movie looks really interesting. And the main reason why I'm excited for it is because it looks like it's building the Joker from the same place that I think he comes from. So a few years ago I made a video where I described what my ideal final confrontation between Batman and the Joker would be. Uh, it's, it's really not a great video, but if you want to watch it, you can. Uh, I severely lack any sense of shame at this point. Uh, but yeah, in recent years I feel like I've finally come down on who I think the Joker is as a character. And that is, simply enough, a man who was at one point the most boring person you'll ever meet, probably had a lame dead-end job, uh, no friends, uh, was most likely a really pathetic rando who felt like he was a nobody, but desperately wanted to be somebody. But he realized that's what everybody wants. And it's what we all strive for in vain, because so few of us actually get what we want when we fight so hard for it while adhering to social and moral convention. So he let go of any sense of morality and responsibility, and he became a symbol of resistance against his perceived enemy. The entity that he felt forced him to be mundane and boring in the first place. Conventional social morality and social norms. He became something symbolic, something dramatic to show the world what he believes, and he believes that moral absolutes don't exist, and they make people boring, just like he was. This actually reminds me of Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky, with the Joker being a sort of a modern update of uh, Rodian Raskolnikov, uh, but stripped away of any sense of remorse, or just a general sense of humanity, really? <laughs> Uh, so, uh, if you've never read Crime and Punishment, it's a book that follows this impoverished Russian law student in the late 1800s named Rodion Raskolnikov, who murders this really bitchy elderly pawnbroker in his town and rationalizes his actions under the notion that the only reason why people are good is because religion. And with Russia being extremely orthodox Catholic at the time, people adhered to the conventions of their faith because they were afraid of eternal damnation. They were afraid of God. However, as Raskolnikov sees things, if you're not afraid of God, then you free yourself from the shackles of conventional morality to do what's necessary. He sees the pawnbroker as a useless figure that's only adding to human misery, and if he takes her out of the equation, then the world would truly be a better place. And this brings me to the Joker. So, I wouldn't say that the conventional shackles that the Joker sees us tied down to are inherently religious, especially in a modern context given how the Western world is probably the least religious it's ever been. But we're still tied down to a collective capitalistic ideology. Or, you know, the American dream, as it were. And we're all working towards something greater, despite the fact that the vast majority of us will never truly attain anything greater in a purely materialistic sense. And a lot of those people who are in positions of power not only work within the system, but they benefit from it. Catholicism, meet capitalism. Bitchy pawnbroker, meet the bourgeois. In the Joker's debut, he kills billionaires because, why not? It's good sport. And this is where the Joker and Raskolnikov diverge. Because when Raskolnikov kills the old woman as well as her sister, he's afraid of what he's become. Unlike the Joker, who revels in it. Further going down the rabbit hole, actively pursuing a status quo that subverts conventional Western ideology through means of violence and terror, all while acting under the symbol of a clown. The Jester. The one who brings bad news to the court in the form of a joke. In our case, the bad news the Joker has come to deliver is that we're all screwed. Yet, we keep chugging along with the status quo because we've been conditioned to uphold the status quo 
under the false promise that we can ascend to something greater when in reality, or reality as the Joker sees it, we're suffering day in and day out to find materialistic happiness that we'll never attain. We're struggling in vain. And isn't that funny? And that's why I'm interested in this new Joker movie. It looks like it's gonna play with a lot of these ideas and I'm interested to see what Todd Phillips, Joaquin Phoenix, and everybody else involved in this movie is gonna bring to the table. And I do understand where a lot of comic book fans are coming from when they say that they don't want to see a Joker movie because it takes away from the mystique of the character. However, just me personally, and I've said this before, I don't see the Joker as this larger-than-life entity. I, I mean, I do, but I don't. I see him as Batman's opposite in the sense that I see Batman as a larger-than-life concept that's brought to life by Bruce Wayne, a very mortal man who chooses to represent an ideal. And that's what the Joker is, a very mortal man who chooses to represent an ideal, only his ideals are in direct opposition to Batman. I choose to see the Joker as a man before I see him as a symbol. And who knows? Maybe after the Joker movie comes out, and if it's good, uh, people will see the character the same way that I do. Anyways guys, those are just my thoughts, but what about you? What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts regarding my thoughts? Uh, let me know down below in the comment section. If you like this video, hit the like button, share support the channel, and if you want to see more content like this, all you have to do is subscribe. I'm the Mystical Green Beanie, thanks for watching, and as always, until next time, adios, nachos. Show me what you